when they say to you that fear is one of the strongest emotions that human beings can experience. It is because of the fact that it is such an intense feeling, we believe that you fundamentally lose control, which means that when you remove that out of the equation, you will achieve two things. You will achieve an efficiency of war, as my colleagues explained to you, which is important because that means that that war will not drag out and you will not have more lives lost. But secondly, it means that you are far less prone to commit acts of, uh, of collateral damage, which will actually lead to a faster conflict solvent even after the war, because there is less resent over the civilians lost, and my analysis will explain why that happens. What I'm going to bring to you in my speech today is talk about the idea of accountability that is enforced by an objectification of war rather than being subjected to the sphere, which is their strongest feeling, as they point, point out, that you can be uh, uh, sub subjected to. And secondly, I'm going to be talking about post-war and how we're actually going to remove this and better integrate veterans within our societies after a war. But before that, a few points of rebuttal in terms of what we heard from the previous speaker. She talks about hesitation and links that to MAD, right, to mutually assured destruction. The reality is that mutually assured destruction works on an objective basis as well. I'm not going to push that trigger because if they do that as well, I will die. The reality is, it is me being irrational that is actually going to make me far likelier to push that button and not consider the fact that they might actually have rockets to shoot back at me as well. Because it is such a strong emotion, right? Mutually assured destruction works exactly on an objective basis, which is exactly what we want to bring back into it. The other thing is that to keep on talking extensively about the fact that we're removing something core and fundamental to the human nature and the human body, right? Something that is intrinsically human, to quote them. Fundamentally, first of all, we're saying as part of our model, we're doing that temporarily anyway, and we're happy to do that. Secondly, if that part that makes us human makes us kill even more people, we're more than fine to remove that nature of ourselves because we believe fundamentally if something is flawed in the human nature, it is okay to remove it out of the equation. Yeah. But secondly, you, what you need to understand is they portray this world where fundamentally by doing this, we're using soldiers as a means to an end, right? Well, that is what war is. We're telling people to go out there and die so that we benefit from the results of the war and winning as such as a society. That is not a harm of our model. That is the unfortunate nature of war to begin with. They talk about fear and link it to self-preservation, right? We fundamentally, and then they try to portray this idea of genocide. We believe that fundamentally, those, all, all those things are going to be achieved when you objectively follow the rules of engagement, because they're written strategically from an overview without the impact of emotions, right? That means that you are no longer purely reactive to the fear and to the scenarios at play, but rather to the objective setting that is written out specifically targeted to minimize both your own potential risk as well as the potential collateral damage. And the moment you have that objective, we believe that you are better off. Sir, but sir, the most obscene sir. point is this idea of a genocide, right? Because you engage in a genocide because you're afraid of everyone else. Madam Speaker, sir. genocide means that I have a big rifle, bigger than everyone else, and I'm shooting at everyone that has no power to fight back. That is what genocide is. It is not led by fear, it is led by other unfortunate, sir, uh, other unfortunate elements, right? They say, well, why don't you remove stuff like hatred and all of those other core emotions when it comes to the human nature? First of all, they're buying into the idea that if there's a negative aspect to the human nature, we can remove. S secondly, I'm going to say, yeah, if the technology allows for it, maybe we should consider removing those as well. But thirdly, if we can see the fact that there's multiple aspects that are negative in the human nature that increase the damages of war, then removing one of those, at least, is still going to be beneficial to the end result of a war, and we're happy to go with that particular logic, right? Not yet. Why do we believe that we achieve accountability, right? And we're starting out from the very premise that they set up, which is that fear is one of the strongest emotions that the human body can actually go through, and the human brain loses its track and its focus when it is subjected to that. That is unfortunately the same narrative that courts tend to buy into, right? That is why fear is constantly used as an extenuating circumstance. That is why it is far less likely that someone who shoots a gun at a civilian out of a fear that he will die makes it legitimate for him to say, well, I was afraid for my own life, the conditions in the ground were horrific, and I can't be sanctioned for it, despite the fact that I, com uh, that I committed a crime, basically, by killing an un a, 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 a non-protected civilian. The moment you remove fear, you remove that extenuating circumstance, meaning that not only is it far less likely that that scenario will happen, but even when it does happen as a result of hatred or all of the other feelings that they want to talk about, then that person is far less, far likelier that he will be sanctioned accordingly, right?
sorry, we will, we will remove that extenuating circumstance in that narrative that, I'm sorry, the, the situation was absolute crap and I acted impulsively and instinctively and I needed to protect myself. Sir. That is how you achieve accountability and that is how you minimize collateral damage within a war. Because people are, are, are acting and are known to be acting as objective agents in that particular war. Sir. I'll be closing. We believe this technology already exists and is called extreme religion. Do you believe this leads to shorter and more efficient wars? Extreme religion, assuming they're going into the, the rationale of put a bomb to, on your vest and goes out somewhere, is a call to action to do something stupid. What we're saying is we're giving you a, a mechanism whereby you minimize the chances of doing something stupid to begin with because you're not subjected to those horribly strong emotions that you guys are talking about. We don't see the, the similarities there in terms, of, uh, in terms of the negative impact. Post-war syndrome, we need to understand that, that soldiers on the ground are subjected to two aspects. It is a horrible fear, right? You, you hear these speeches about people living through trenches and the horrifying feeling that they have being constantly bombed. You, talk, you hear veterans from Vietnam talking about the jungles and not knowing where bullets are coming from, right? That particular type of a fear, as well as the potential damages that they've done and killing civilians by accident because they were afraid for their own lives, are things that stay with these people after the war concludes. They, they stay with them after they come back home. They have nightmare over these things. They're haunted over these things. And they simply cannot adjust as a result of this particular thought because of the fact that they can't let these particular feelings go, right? Of both remorse as well as particular fear. And they're even harder for them to integrate into society because they are a means of an end as soldiers. They have been sent out there and they've experienced those things because, uh, because of the society that has sent them there. And that is the same society that they're trying to reintegrate. A society that can't empathize with the hor horrific fear that they've gone through and the horrific things that they've done as a result of that fear. We believe that fundamentally when you remove fear, you remove both of these particular traumatic experiences that, that plagued our veterans and we will ease their, protect, their, their involvement after the conflict. And as speaker, we've showed you that you're minimizing the harms of a conflict, you're making it shorter, and you're minimizing collateral damage. But you're also reintegrating people that are involved in a war far better under our model. You need to propose.